Hi, I'm Mas Trida, a rationalist and transhumanist blogger. Today, here with me is João Pedro de Magalhaes, uh, a professor at Liverpool University, a famous expert in longevity, a transhumanist. Hi, Pedro. Hi, great to be here. Um, can you please explain for the audience what is it exactly that you do in the area of fighting aging? So I guess, broadly speaking, I, I'm interested in understanding the process of aging. I'm interested in understanding why we age at a molecular, cellular, um, physiological level. What are the genetic determinants of longevity? How can we intervene in aging and you know, ultimately really develop therapies that allow people to live longer, healthier lives? Um, I know that there are different approaches to aging. Some say that it's just uh, accumulated damage mm -hmm. to various systems of the organism. Some researchers say that uh, aging is something inherent in the cellular structure. What's your approach? I think that there are more than one component to aging. Uh, I do think there are some elements of damage, like um, in particular DNA damage. I think that is probably important in aging. Um, there's also a program element to it in a way that, to a very significant degree, aging is genetically determined. Um, so I think there are different components to it, both a damage component and a program component. Having said that, we don't really understand why human beings age. We have hypotheses, we have theories, I have my own. Um, I think the idea that DNA damage is important with aging, I think that's widely accepted, but I wouldn't say it's proven. So I don't think we yet understand well why human beings age. Just it's still a major challenge of the field. And what's your theory? So I think it's a combination of both DNA damage and program elements. Uh, in other words, um, developmental genetically determined mechanisms that go wiry, go, go wrong in old age. So you have like a, you know, like a movie that runs, but then eventually stops running, and, and that causes um, inadvertently causes damage to the organism or causes dysfunction to the organisms. So it's almost as if aging is a runoff, uh, an unintended consequence of certain developmental processes. Um, having said that, I, again, I don't think we understand it very well. What is the essence of aging? What is, really at the nitty gritty molecular details, why do we age? Um. So what would you think would be the logical next steps to start uh, preventing aging, reversing it? Well, I guess uh, in terms of preventing aging, we know of some ways like lifestyle, uh, exercise, eat healthy, <laughs> don't smoke, don't drink too much alcohol and so on. But it helps only to a certain extent. Exactly. So, and, you know, more than that, we can have pharmacological manipulations, uh, which at least in animal models work, I'm not sure. We're not sure they work in humans. Um, and then I guess ultimately what we would like to do is really reshape the genetic program, reshape our genetics in order to allow us to overcome our biological barriers, our genetic program and our genetic limitations um, to allow us to, to control our aging process and truly stop it and even reverse it. But I think that's still quite far into the future. It's not something that's possible in, in animal models. Um, but ultimately, I think that's the objective. Uh, has uh, any progress been made in the area? So there's been a lot of progress in manipulating aging in animals. Um, at a genetic level, we can manipulate genes in animals. Uh, we can create genetically modified organisms that will live longer, that age slower, that are healthier for longer. So that's quite impressive. You're we speaking can... about mice? I'm talking about all, all the way from worms, where you can extend lifespan by 10 times, to mice where, well, of course, mice are more complex, so you can extend lifespan up to 50% with genetic manipulations. So that's right. the fact that aging is malleable, that we can accelerate it and retard it in animals, is very impressive. Um, there's no reason to think we can't do the same in humans, although we're not sure. So I guess the point is, we know that there is ways of manipulating aging, but can we translate them to humans? Um, I guess in that context, we can't, at least not yet, we can't really manipulate human genes like we can in animals. So what we have are pharmacological manipulations as well that allow us to some, to a lesser degree than genetics, allow us to manipulate aging as well in animals. So those more may be easier to apply to humans. 
Um, whether they will work in humans, we don't know. But at, at least in theory, we have ways of manipulating in animals that may be applicable to human beings. And that's, I think that's the lo logical next step. Uh, because that's something that's on the horizon. Now, it's not going to cure aging or stop aging, but it will allow us to slow aging. And if we could slow aging, even if slightly, that would have you know, huge medical, health, social, economic benefits. I absolutely agree. Aubrey de Grey has been on this show, and uh, he's also optimistic about uh, fighting aging. Uh, and he, he says that we can, uh, in some future, reach uh, escape velocity mm -hmm. uh, when we prevent aging faster than we age. Uh, do you believe that uh, all this could uh, lead to true immortality for humans? So uh, it's hard for me to say something is impossible unless it violates the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. I, guess, I guess true immortality is impossible because the universe will cease to exist one day. So, um, but physical immortality or biological immortality in the sense of not aging, there's no reason to think that's impossible. We know that there are species that appear not to age, so um, there's no reason to think that we cannot engineer our biology for us not to age as well. So, I think that's possible. I think the question is, okay, is that going to happen in the, the near future? Um, there's no evidence for that. I mean, we cannot engineer immortality in, in animals. We can, um, we can extend lifespan, as I said. We can extend lifespan in mice up to 50%, but the animals will still age, they will still die. Um, and even those effects, even though they're impressive in animals, we're not sure they're going to be applicable to human beings. So I guess for the foreseeable future, what we have is this manipulations that we can do in animals of slowing aging to a certain degree. As for stopping aging or reversing it, well, that's not possible yet. I do think it will be possible in the future, but not in the foreseeable future. So you take 50 years, you can take 500 years, it can take 50,000 years. We, we just don't know. So you don't have a, a timeline? I think anything beyond 50 years is science fiction. Anything can happen. We can have a nuclear holocaust and all of us down. We can have um, a magic you know, discovery that allows us to do things in a way nobody ever suspected were possible. But many uh, futurists say that uh, you know, the singularity is near and uh, things will start changing really rapidly after 2030, something like that. Do you agree? Um, again, I, I don't see any evidence for that. I mean, maybe it will happen, maybe it won't. It's, it's again, it's, it's a prediction. So we don't know if it's going to turn out to be true or not. A bit like a nuclear holocaust. We don't know if Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump will have a fight and they'll start a nuclear war and we all die. I would probably say that's more likely than as having a singularity. Uh, I.e., as going extinct is more likely than as um, reaching escape velocity within the very short time scale. But nobody knows what's going to happen for sure. Um, I guess as a biologist and as a scientist, um, biomedical scientist, what I can do is I can extrapolate what we're discovering uh, at the basic science level to humans because that's normally what happens. What you see now in terms of medicine is um, the, the result of discoveries done decades ago. So what we're discovering in biology of aging is a slowdown of the aging process that we can achieve in animal models. So I think there's a reasonable chance we're going to do that in humans. I think, I'm, I would say I'm optimistic that we will develop longevity drugs, drugs that slow down aging, because that's possible in animals, we know how to do it. Um, as for immortality or reversing aging, again, that's not possible yet in, in, in animals, so there's no reason to think that's going to be possible in, in the near future for human beings. Uh, so what's your forecast for the current generation? How long will my generation live on average? Hmm. I mean people in developed countries who have access to all those agent reversing technologies. So I, I am optimistic that lifespan will continue to increase, just like it has for decades now. I'm optimistic that things like longevity drugs will come to market in the first four for, for, uh, for our generation, so something that will occur, that we will benefit um, in the foreseeable future. I don't think the effects will be massive. I don't think we're going to live 200 years, but we may live 5, 10 years longer than we're living now, maybe 15 years longer. Um, so I see that happening. I see people living longer, a modest degree, um, in the next few decades. 
Um, as I said, after that, you know, <laughs> it's, it's science fiction. I mean, what's going to happen 50 or 100 years yeah, from now? It's, it's, we don't know. But as far as I know, most of the progress with uh, increasing the life expectancy is due not to some scientific discoveries of recent times, but due to just a high level of life and uh, access to medicine, access to good food. Um, so there hasn't been no significant breakthroughs that uh, allow us to extend our lives uh, by doing something to our genes up to now. True, uh, yes. W what are you uh, saying when you say uh, medicine for uh, reversing aging? Well, what I mean is, so take, for example, some of the medicines we have now. Statins would be a good example, cholesterol-lowering drugs. Mm -hmm. They help millions of people. Um, so, and if you have high cholesterol, you'll be on them. Most likely for the rest of your life. So if we have a longevity drug, let's say metformin works as retarding mm -hmm. aging, then, well, already millions of people take metformin for other uh, diseases like, like type 2 diabetes. So you would have individuals, people taking those drugs in order to live longer. So Just that, on, a regu on a regular basis. Exactly, on a regular basis. So, and, and then we see that already. Now, okay, so you can say, well, we haven't really done much about the aging process. Yes, we have tackled some age-related diseases like with statins, like with metformin. Um, so there are some diseases we've been able to tackle or at least diminish or at least control to some degree. But we haven't really done all that much about aging. And that's true. We, we, need, to, we need to really retard the process of aging if we are to continue increasing our lifespan and our health span. Um, but there has been, you know, I'll give you one example. The percentage of elderly people now with, um, with teeth, with the teeth that they were that they had with a natural treat, it's much higher than it was 50 or 100 years ago. That's down to fluoride, just to fluoride-based toothpaste. Mm. So now that doesn't contribute to mortality because you don't die because your teeth don't work, but that contributes to a health, to a, a well-being. So there are areas where there has been progress, there has been medical progress in improving the lives and the quality of life uh, of elderly individuals. Um, so I wouldn't underestimate that, but clearly, much more needs to be done and we need to really focus on at least retarding the process of aging that that is the next step in improving the human condition okay but still even in your optimistic uh, forecast mm -hmm. it's not very likely that uh, you or me will live to immortality however no. you call yourself a transhumanist yes how do you um, intend to solve uh, solve death, solve this problem. Uh, are you signed up for cryonics or something like that? So I guess cryonics would be the plan B. If uh, reversing aging or stopping aging fails, cryonics would be an option. I, I mean, I think if I, were, if I were diagnosed with cancer tomorrow, you know, <laughs> knock on wood, but, uh, and I had a year to live, yeah, I, I would be cryopreserved, yes, I would. So I think there is a reasonable chance that I will be cryopreserved one day. I still have, um, I have a small probability or a small chance that we will be able to reach escape velocity and stop aging within my lifetime. But I'm not optimistic. I'm not optimistic it will even happen to my daughters, you know, and their, and their children. So I don't think it will happen, but I could be wrong. There may be some amazing discovery. A lot of, I mean, science is not a, a linear process. It's, it's yeah. actually quite a, you know, you go for, you know, uh, major advances, then you kind of plateau, then you go, oh, a major advance, and that's how science works. So it's very difficult to predict what's going to happen. Um, so I would say, yes, you know, I worried about death. I don't want to die. Um, and uh, if I reach that point, I hope I have enough time to do something about it, including cryopreservation. Um, so, you're, mm, you, so you think that cryonics is a thing that uh, transhumanists should look into? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, don't get me wrong, there's lots of problems with cryonics at the moment. Lots of technical issues, lots of scientific issues. I mean, the, the whole cryopreservation protocol causes massive amounts of damage to tell cells and tissues, including to neurons. So there's lots of problems with it. And whether it's going to work, I mean, I have my doubts, and lots of scientists have their doubts. But considering the alternative, which is death, which is eternal oblivion, yes, I, I think it's something uh, people should, should look into, definitely. They should at least get informed about it.
What about other ways to immortality that uh, tra transhumanists speak about? For example, digital immortality, uploading your consciousness. What do you think about them? I'm, I'm not persuaded that a copy of my mind is me. You know, you can make. You don't agree. Okay. Well, I think it's it's maybe more of a philosophical issue than a scientific issue. But if you make a copy of my mind, okay, you make a copy of me into a computer, you know. But then you take a knife and you stab me. That's still going to hurt. You know, I'm still going to feel that. So, so what if there's a copy of me? I, you know, I don't want to feel that pain. I don't want to die myself. So I think there's a biological element of me now that I can't foresee how you can untangle that from my mind in a way. I, th I can see in the future making copies of my mind, but they're not going to be me. So, so it's not it's like having your twin brother. That's not me. That's a different person. So what happens to that person is not what happens to me. Well, um, it's not, uh, I think, uh, the comparison to twin brothers is not very accurate because twin brothers have uh, different uh, life experiences and stuff like this. Yeah, We're talking your about mind. uploading your mind which has the same memories. Uh, but the they will differ thoughts. at some point, no? Um, if I make a copy of my mind into a computer, sure, at, at that moment in time it's the same as me, but then it will diverge. Well, uh, that problem can be solved by uh, making the copy in the moment the person dies. So uh, your biological body dies, mm -hmm. but your mind is uploaded and there is continuity. In this case, is this you? No, because still no? It's, it's still not you because, okay, you died, but well, let's say you don't die, it's still not you. So the fact that you die, that you cease to exist as an individual doesn't mean that that other copy of you is you. Just a copy of you. The way I see it is a copy of you. Don't you see it as falling asleep and waking up just in a computer? No, I see a copy of me waking up. Okay. But uh, are you going to do uh, mind uploading if the technology is available? Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a bit like, uh, well, it's a bit like, would I like to have a clone of me? I mean, okay, okay, I guess a clone would take a very long time to generate. But uh, would I have to like to have a copy of my mind? I guess as a scientist, I have a natural interest, I have a natural curiosity. I would like to speak to a copy of my mind. Um, so, why not? And if you clone yourself and upload your consciousness into your clone, mm -hmm. in that case, will it be you? No, it will be a still, copy of me. Still yes. that, yeah, still. <laughs> because you can, and you, you can make more than one copy, you can be five mm -hmm. copies of me. Okay, think about it. Uh, here we uh, speak of it as a matter of fact that death is bad and uh, I believe it sincerely and mm -hmm. I know you do too. Yes, absolutely. But many people don't. They, they say that death is a part of life, it's, uh, it's a good thing, uh, they justify it uh, via various uh, arguments. Um, how would you dissuade those people? I don't think I could. I mean, some people, they don't... Well, some people are religious, they believe that we don't die, actually. Well, our body dies, but our soul will go to heaven. So, uh, I, I don't think that's possible to those dissuade those individuals. Those can't be dissuaded, yeah. Um, I think that there are uh, other uh, people who just accept their own death. They just accept it and they don't want to think about it because, mm -hmm. well, if you can't do anything about it, then uh, you don't want to really stress out about it. You know? <laughs> You know, a, um, a football game, if your team is losing by 5-0, you know, you're relaxed, you're going to lose the game, who cares? But if your team certainly scores three goals and it's 5-3, oh, I'm excited now, we got a chance, right? So same about death, you know, if you think, ah, I'm going to die, period, I, I might as well relax about it, then um, it's less stressful. On the other hand, if you think, you know, there's a chance, then I might cure aging. And if it fails, maybe I can be cryopreserved. But wait, what if I fail to curate? Or what if I fail to be cryopreserved? Maybe I die in an accident, in a plane crash. You know, all those things can stress you out. So, in a way, I envy people who are not afraid to die. I think it's, it's an easier route. Um, having said that, so going back to your question, how do we persuade those individuals? I'm not sure you can persuade them. I, I, I mean, there's, there's an old saying that you don't persuade your scientific opponents. What happens is that they die and the next generation is more accepted, um, is more agreeable to your ideas. So what I think we need to do is make sure that the next generation um, is more transhumanistic or is more um, likely to, to fight death and to want to do 
the, the, the research or the involvement or the activism in order to fight that, either by aging, crop preservation, whatever it takes. I think that's what we need. Yeah, because uh, I strongly believe that we don't do enough uh, nowadays. We don't invest enough money in mm -hmm. this area and most people don't even know that uh, there is hope. <laughs> Absolutely, it's a, it's a big problem and that's why we need, you know, people like you, you know, doing, doing blogs. I mean, I go to schools and give talks and so trying to, I think we all need to do our share of trying to uh, spread the word that, okay, aging is malleable. Well, most people don't know. We can manipulate aging. Okay, it's in animals, but we can manipulate. We can accelerate aging, we can retard it. Most people don't know that. So, so it's something, I think we as a scientist have a, a duty, well, maybe duty is too strong of a word, but I think we should play our role in trying to address that. Um, there are other people who say that, yeah, maybe um, longevity, uh, radical extension of life are possible, but they bring less benefits than they bring harm. Some people say that there will be dictatorships ruled by dictators who are uh, 300 years mm -hmm. old, uh, for example, uh, and will oppress their citizens for eternity. Then others say that uh, those technology will be given only to the rich and they will um, dominate the world and mm -hmm. the poor will starve and suffer and will not li live a long life. Um, how would you respond to those criticisms? Uh, so, I mean, so there's several criticisms there, I guess. I guess, first of all, in all technological breakthroughs, there are challenges um, and there are issues. And we have issues of overpopulation already on Earth, which we have to address, whether we're living 50 years, 80 years or 800 years. We have to address those. We have an issue of lack of natural resources. Um, so that's something we need to address. Um, as for issues specifically with longevity, well, I, I would say that everybody wants to be healthy. and. and Tackling aging is about making people healthy. Nobody, nobody wants to have Alzheimer's disease or cancer or cardiovascular diseases. Nobody wants those diseases. So it's about making people healthy. And we are healthy. We, you know, this is the healthiest we've ever been from a global perspective. Yeah. Um, this is the best time to be alive, uh, thanks to technology and from a, from a health perspective as well. And that's wonderful. That's brilliant. You know, I, I, I mean, I had pneumonia when I was a child. If I had been born 50 years ago, I'd be dead by now. Yeah. So, so this is the greatest time to be alive. Uh, um, and that's wonderful. Okay, so, but that leads to problems like um, overpopulation. Overpopulation is mostly due to birth rates, more than how long people live. So it is something, again, we have to address um, independently how long people live. Um, as for costs, which you touch upon, we don't know, but when you look at medicine, that's not the history. I mean, you know, penicillin was unbelievably precious when it started, of course. Um, so I think that the first patient, you know, they, that they administer penicillin, they want to take his urine out to purify penicillin that was excreted in the urine to give to the next patient. That's how pressured it was. But then once you have mass production, it becomes uh, a medicine that's available um, to, to the masses. Um, so I'm convinced that longevity will be the same thing. When it starts, it will be expensive, but then when we reach the masses, we have mass production, it will be cheap and available to everyone. So I'm not overly concerned about that because that's not what our experience with medicines has been so far. Um, so I guess there are issues, there are issues that we need to consider, um, there are issues that we need to be aware of, um, but making people healthy, I, do, I still think that, that trumps everything. We have to make people healthy, we have to make people um, disease free, and if we can do that then it's great, and then we address the other issues. Uh, last, I want to ask uh, about the most promising areas of your personal research. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what, are you, um, what you are doing right so now? So, I guess in terms of short-term applications, probably the most interesting is, is we're developing caloric restriction memetics, which is drugs that mimic the beneficial effects of caloric restriction, which of course extends lifespan and retards aging in multiple animal models. Um, and we're doing that um, by testing in animals and developing um, using computational approaches, new compounds that retard uh, aging in animals. Actually, we don't develop new compounds, we identify new existing compounds that we can use to retard aging. Um, so that's, that's the most exciting, I think, in my lab at the moment in terms of short-term applications. So we've done a number of experiments in worms already, and now we're trying to get funding to do this in mice as well. Um, 
I guess in the longer term, what I would like to do is to, to really understand the genetic program and how, how we can manipulate it uh, to make, you know, really hijack um, the aging process, really stop it or even reverse it um, in human beings. But that's much, much riskier, much more difficult, and I think longer term. And whether we're going to be able to do that in my lifetime, I don't know. But it, it's certainly something that um, I think it's, it's, it's worth a try. What kind of advice would you give to uh, an aspiring transhumanist uh, uh, who wants to live longer, to uh, try to live to the moment uh, when we reach, for example, escape velocity? What can I do today to live longer? So I, I think now you need to follow your mother's advice, you know, and exercise, eat healthy, don't smoke, um, drink alcohol in moderation, um, keep a healthy BMI. So that, that's, that's really the advice we have now. I mean, that, that's what I do. I don't really take any, any drugs or supplements. I so mean, you're not a biohacker? No, no. I, I, I might, you know, I might take vitamin D supplements in the winter. That's, that's about as far as I go. So I don't really um, do much beyond what is, you know, again, your mother's advice. So that's, 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 that's how I do it. But I, I also think it depends on individual. I mean, some people like to eat. Um, you know, I like to eat ice cream, so I'm not going to stop eating ice cream. I don't eat it every day, but I will eat ice cream sometimes. Um, because you also want to enjoy life a bit. You know, you don't, you don't want to be like the, the old couple, you know, that they, they didn't eat meat, they didn't smoke, they didn't drink alcohol, and even the children were adopted. Live longer. This has been Must Reader. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my Medium blog. Thank you so much, Pedro. My pleasure. Thank you.